first lectionary reading is going to be from Hebrews. It will be chapter 13, verses 1 through 8, and then 15 through 16. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. For by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison, and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, because God has said, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Though Jesus, therefore, through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips, that openly profess his name, and do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. Those are the words of God for the people of God. All right. Uh, we're going to do our Apostles' Creed. John is uh, out today, so I'm, I'll be filling in for, it looks like, the announcements too. So if you have an announcements, help me out here, because we I didn't have anything wrote, written down. Uh, the Apostles' Creed, join me if you would. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's stand if you want. standing as we sing, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Oh, 
second lectionary reading is Luke 14, 1, and then 7 through 14. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. When he noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, Give this person your seat. Then, humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, Friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all other guests, for all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Then Jesus said to his host, When you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends or brothers or sisters or relatives or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The word of God for the people of God. All right. <clears throat> In way of announcements, uh, the only thing I have um, is I want to have a short board meeting after church today. We'd appreciate it if you're able to stay, if you're a part of the board. And uh, then uh, stewardship reports in there. But are there any other announcements that we need to make? I don't know if the flowers are designated today. I don't normally do. What? Okay, so Hazel, the flowers are dedicated to your mom. Her name? Ollie. Ollie, Ollie okay. All right, so thank you uh, for doing that. Uh, I think, is it Wednesday night? Pretty soon coming up, we're going to be having uh, the potluck. Oh, yeah. I forgot about it. Thank you for reminding me. I forgot about that. Mission truck came last week and got the old coke machine. Oh, they did? The, the mission truck took the coke machine? No. <laughs> okay. I want to get it. All right, they'll take anything. <laughs> Anybody else have an announcement before we go to prayer? Uh, okay, uh, wait. All right, from, uh, hurt her ankle in the game. So we have a basketball player here. She's uh, uh, apparently pretty good, but I uh, want to pray for her friend. That hurt her ankle. Thank you. Any other prayer requests this morning? Did you have any, Sandy, from Sunday school? Sandy has one, but I do. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that. Does anybody have any updates on that? Is it about the same? Okay. And uh, Larry Kendrick's family, uh, a very good chaplain at the hospital for many years. So uh, Peyton Lynch, uh, he's sick today. I'm going to send it out so that she was with him. Sick. Terry Diller's family, uh, the family of John L. Bolden. Is that right? Um, Bolden. And then we want to remember Jewel Blackburn. And the flood victims. There's still many living in tents. So continue to remember our remember our government, especially if they try to find ways to get them housing before women come to set this tough situation. 
Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, what was that name again? K. Harris. K. Harris. Okay. Thank you. Any unspoken requests for lifting your hand? Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Lord, we're so thankful today that you do hear our prayers, our cries. And God, with your love and kindness that you reach out to us. So many needs represented here today and in a world where so much injustice is done. We need you more than ever. And we want to pray for these spoken requests this morning as well as the unspoken requests. We continue to pray for Sarah today and her recovery. Pray for those that are still battling illnesses such as COVID and other illnesses. We pray, God, for those in the hospital today, patients and families, and the staff that are working. We pray for our local pastors here in, in Pikeville and Pike County, God, that you'd bless them today. God, we know that you never leave us and you never forsake us, but sometimes life gets very challenging. And we pray for those that are here today, Lord, that maybe have had a challenging week, month, year. And God, we pray for Sandy uh, Walter's family and just pray, God, that you'd be with them today and pray for the peace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. We continue to pray for those that have been affected by, by the flood and, and still some, Lord, still without homes. God, we do pray that the money that's been raised and the money that's available and the help that's available would be given properly, Lord. And bless those that have given. And we pray today, Lord, as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, uh, so our offering today, Paul, if you don't mind, in a minute, <clears throat> we'll sing our doxology and you say a prayer for our offering. And uh, the stewardship report is in the, the bulletin, if you could read my writing there. Uh, but thank you for your offering uh, today and, and in the past. Let's sing our doxology.
about this on Wednesday night, and I hate that Carol isn't here. Okay, so, she can watch the video. Huh? She can watch the, she video. Can watch the video, yeah. She had said that one of her favorite songs was uh, Sunnyside, so. so that was. Oh, was that yeah. you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. That was the one that said you need to sing it again. Okay. So it came up, he said, you're singing Sunday, and I said, okay. Well, then we know that what song it is. So this song, uh, we talked about this, I sang this at our family gathering last weekend, and it just, you know, it's my theme song, and I truly believe that, you know, it, no matter what's going on in your life, you know, when you know that God is with you, it somehow just brings you that confidence to be able to get through it, and, and so you know, try to keep on the sunny side, and so that's my theme song, so we're going to sing it today. And, oh, please, sing it with me. Well, there's a dark and a trouble inside of life. There's a bright and a trouble inside too. Though you meet with the darkness and strife. Oh, the sunny side you also may view. Here we go. Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side of life. And it will help us every day. It will brighten all our way. It will keep on the sunny side of life. Oh, the storms and its furies broke today. Crushing hopes that we cherish so deep. And the clouds and the storms will pass away. But the sun will shine again bright and clear. Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side of life. It will help us every day. So let us greet with a song of hope each day. Though the moments be cloudy up there, let us trust in our Savior always. He will guide us, everyone, in His care. Sandy's ready for the Grand Ole Opry. <laughs> Our scripture reading is taken from Jeremiah in the second chapter, beginning with verse 4. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, What wrong did your ancestors find in me that they went far from me? and went after worthless things and became worthless themselves. They did not say, where is the Lord who brought us up from the land of Egypt, who led us in the wilderness, in a land of deserts and pits, in a land of drought and deep darkness, in a land that no one passes through, where no one lives. I brought you into a plentiful land to eat its fruits and its good things. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. The priest did not say, Where is the Lord? Those who handle the law do not know me. The rulers transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and went after things that do not profit. Therefore, once more, I accuse you, says the Lord, and I accuse your children's children. Cross to the coast of Cyprus and look. Send to Kedar and examine with care. See if there has ever been such a thing. 
Has a nation changed its gods, even though there are no gods? But my people have changed their glory for something that does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked. Be utterly desolate. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and dug out cisterns for themselves, cracked cisterns that can hold no water. Let's pray. Father, make us a thoughtful and humble people. Help us to remember the many blessings, even in times of trial. Bless our pastor as he opens the words to us and inspires us. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. On December the 21st, uh, the 20th on, in 2021, a person who's an actor named Jesse Smollett was, uh, in, at the time, a really uh, popular uh, series called Empire. He was an actor in that. He was convicted of five of six felonies when he accused uh, two masked men, I should have say that he, uh, a black person, and he accused two masked men, white people, of uh, coming in and uh, trying to, uh, said they tied him up and, and basically made it a hate crime. And it turned out that it was a hoax. Apparently he was trying to bolster his image and his career by drawing attention to himself and in the end uh, found out to be uh, a hoax. He ended up having to pay, uh, well, he paid these two guys uh, to, to, to do it and paid him like $3,500 to, to do the crime, to make it look like a hate crime. But in March uh, of this year, he was convicted and uh, was sentenced to 150 days in jail. Doesn't sound like a lot, but uh, he did say, and by the way, he, he got out on uh, waiting on a, an appeal. But he said in court, quote, I've lost my livelihood. The very thing that he was trying to help his career, he ended up ruining his career. Which kind of reminds me of what Jeremiah is saying in, in chapter 2 here that we just read. In verse 11, it says that has a nation changed its gods, which are not gods, following after things that are not really gods. And, and the idea there that we make, we can make things gods. We can create gods. They're not really gods, but they can become gods if we put them on a pedestal they're never meant to be on. For what does change in, he said, gods which are not gods, but my people have changed their glory for what does not profit. In other words, leaving something great to go after something that doesn't profit, that has no profit, no value, and maybe even can be harmful. Does that sound familiar today? Be astonished, he says, O heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be very desolate, says the Lord, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and have hewn themselves cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. They've forsaken the source of life, cisterns, and, and created their own cisterns, which are broken and cannot hold water. So many people today that are in that situation. And it seems like uh, bent on self-destruction, if you will. I think sometimes uh, we 
are our worst enemy. And we do things knowingly sometimes that are harmful, both to our spiritual soul and our physical self. You know, there are things out there that, uh, you know, at one time uh, we might have been able to say, well, we didn't know. Uh, you know, for example, uh, the way we the way we treat our bodies, or what you know, smoking, not eating, right, all these things, and and yet we know the, the what the science is. We know certain things are harmful. So it's not something that is done usually out of ignorance. We knowingly and intentionally do these things. So here's the first point today I want to make. When we refuse to live spiritual lives. The result is often a life of self-destruction. When we're not following the fountain of life, when we're not following the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the words of God, oftentimes what is left is we, find, we follow the wrong voices, sometimes our own inner desires. And you know what happens when we just, uh, you know, as the old saying, so just do whatever feels good, you know what happens? This is what happens. We enter a life of self-destruction. It's not a good thing at all. And sometimes when we do this, we, we begin to realize that these patterns, they become patterns, are things that uh, are really harmful to us and sometimes even to other people. Let me give you, there's a list here. I want to give you some examples of this. Avoidance of people or situations that might cause fear, hurt, or pain. The idea is that if one avoids risk, if you don't commit to a job or a person or a direction or a goal, you can't fail. So just avoidance. Not standing up for oneself or inability to ask for what one needs. That can be harmful. Constantly seeking attention or approval from others. Aggression, bullying, and verbal, emotional, or physical abuse to one's own, to hide one's own feelings of insecurity, unworthiness, and poor self-image. Oftentimes, bullying is just an emotional aggression because of our own poor self-image. Substance abuse or other addictive behaviors, overeating, gambling, overspending, risky sexual partners or patterns, workaholic syndrome, etc., these things are all part of that. Procrastination. Patterns of lack of punctuality. Picking fights with friends or partners over inconsequential matters. Refusing to accept responsibility for one's own mistakes. Blaming others for difficulties in one's life. An inability to receive constructive criticism. These are things that are all part of these self-destructive patterns. And maybe we can see in some of those, at least, that we have a tendency to do the same thing. And that's why we have to understand that when we're not following the guidance that God has set forth for us, and being uh, productive and being wise, then we can fall into these self defeating behaviors. The second thing today is this. Self-destructive actions and attitudes can become a pattern that is repeated over and over. And what happens is, you know, it becomes something that becomes part of us. And we begin to repeat that pattern. It becomes part of our, of our lifestyle. And there are those who uh, find some, uh, for lack of a better word, comfort in hurting themselves. I, I remember when I worked at Mountain Comprehensive Care and I had to go out on crisis calls. I was a crisis coordinator for five counties and I would go out and oftentimes we'd go to these calls and I remember a couple individuals, one in particular who she was a, a cutter and would cut herself uh, and be taken to the hospital. And I didn't understand that. I had never been around anyone that was like that. And, and uh, it, it is something that was a pattern for this person. Uh, when, when they were full, full of stress, that they would do that. And this, 
is a self-destructive action that becomes a pattern for some people. There's an essay, a uh, young man, he's in his 20, early 20s, by the name of Chris Kidd, who has put into words and has a way of words his own lifestyle. And he's one that's kind of been a person who has a pattern of self-destruction as well. And this is what he had to say about his own life in his blog. He said, there is a stability in self-destruction, in prolonging sadness as a means of escaping abstractions like happiness. Rock bottom is surprisingly comfortable. It's a, rock, it's a comfortable place to lay your head. Let me say that again. Rock bottom is a surprisingly comfortable place to lay your head. Looking up from the depths of another low often seems a lot safer than wondering when you'll fall again. Falling feels awful. I'd rather blank fly. And what he's trying to say there, and I think what, what I'm trying to say, is that there are people who, because their life has been so much trauma and chaos, that that feels normal somehow. That even when there isn't chaos, they begin to find a way to make chaos. Because all of their life, their parents or their families, there was trauma, trauma, trauma. And then when things are good and normal, it, it just doesn't feel normal. Because their normal is chaos. And they will often find ways to create chaos to feel normal again. That doesn't make sense, does it? But it's true. For those people who have grown up in, in those kind of households, and what often happens is they will, they will get into relationships that are uh, abusive relationships. They will become uh, in an abusive relationship or they will abuse themselves or whatever in abusive patterns because that's the only life they've ever known. But here's the thing, the next point here. In order to change our self-destructive patterns, we must consider the cost. We have to consider what is this costing me? What is this doing to me in order to change? We have to do some serious inward reflection. In fact, a psychologist and former priest, Eugene Kennedy, says... By doing this, it helps us achieve self-knowledge. Looking inwardly. And, you know, part of the problem with people that are in these destructive patterns is they're always blaming their problems on someone else. It's somebody else's fault. Somebody did this to me. And true, in some sense, that they may have had a bad relationship, a bad marriage, or a bad home life. But they use that as an excuse to continue a destructive pattern, even though it may have happened many years ago. But what we have to do is ask the question, what is this doing to me? And what am I getting out of this? The next point is, what am I getting out of this? That's really what we're saying. Look at the cost of what we're doing to each other. In, uh, if you have your Bibles in Romans chapter 7, I believe, the Apostle Paul realizes his own uh, tendency sometimes to do the wrong, the bad, and go against what he knows is right. In Romans chapter 7, verse 15, and just before verse 15, he says, But I am carnal, human, human, sowed under sin. And then he says in verse 15, for what I am doing, I do not understand. I do not understand for what I will to do or want to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. And so we can see here, even in the scriptures, a man of God who struggled his own life, his own self, with those kind of tendencies. 
As we sung this morning, prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. It is part of our sinful human nature to want to get off the path to do the wrong thing, to see the grass looks greener on the other side or whatever, and go on self-destructive behaviors until finally we look back and we realize, what have I done? It was the prodigal son who found themselves after he was almost starved to death in the pig pen saying, what am I doing? What happened? I had it made. I had it all. I had, I had everything I needed in comfort in life. And here I am doing this. I've been there. I've been there. I don't know about you, but I've been in those situations. And maybe you haven't on this scale, but you, there's been times you've looked back probably and said, I should have done that. That wasn't a good idea. And sometimes we have to learn from our mistakes, but it only happens when we realize the cost of that. In John chapter 4, Jesus gives an analogy of, of the water at the well. He's talking to the woman at the well, and she begins to talk about how great this water is at the well. And then Jesus says to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. I think there might be a slide on that. Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give will become in them a spring of water gushing up into eternal life. And here Jesus is comparing the temporary waters of this life, even the good waters that can only temporarily fulfill a need to the waters that He gives eternal life that can fulfill a need forever. And the spiritual soul is devoid of those things. And we try to fill it. This lady at the well had been married all these times and was just trying to find a way to fill that void looking for love in all the wrong places. And sometimes we ourselves, we, can, we know people or we've also been guilty of, of the fact that we're, we're trying to fill a void in our life. There's something missing in our heart or in our life that we're filling with something else. And it can be food, it can be alcohol, it can be drugs, it can be relationships. But there's something missing. And until we figure that out, until we fix that, we're going to continue those same destructive patterns. We have to learn how to live with ourselves and to be happy with ourselves and with God before we can be happy with anything else. And then when we do, when we fix that, then we won't feel the need to have these destructive patterns in our life. And so what do we do? We simply go to the source of the water that's of water of life. And Jesus says unto, to us, Come unto me all your labor. And he says also, if you're thirsty, I'll give you water. If you're hungry, I'll give you food. And Jesus offers that to us today. It's there for the taking. It's free. Come without money and buy. You can get this today. But it's up to us. And many people today will walk away from the best offer in the world. Eternal life. I mean, it don't get any better than that, does it? Eternal life. And we'll, we'll turn that down for something that will not satisfy, that will only lead us to a life of destruction. How sad. But it happens every single day. So today, I'm going to invite you, whatever it is that in your life, that, that those patterns that you want to change, you can do that today by turning to God and looking at your own selves and realize what is it about myself that needs to change and how do I start making that happen and what is it doing to me all right when I uh, ask the musicians to come up let's pray Lord today we thank you that we have the Word of God which challenges us and stirs us up and reminds us Lord sometimes of our need to listen and our need to follow you. And so today, I pray, God, that you would help us to walk in the path of righteousness, holiness, 
and follow Lord the Lord and, and knowing God that you give us the water of life freely. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're going to get our, our song today, Jesus Lover of My Soul. And we're going to ask you to stand. If the invitation, the altar is open, and anybody wants to come and pray, if you're listening from home, you can pray right where you are. the outcasts and the grieving and speak the words of life and hope and may the God who breathed life into creation be your delight. Let us sing sent forth by God's blessing I'll remind you there's a short meeting after church. <laughs>